and they have announced that both platforms will be closing here in South Korea. million brands here that have 15 million shades of beige. this really cute cafe in my area and not only are they a cafe but they also have bagels and lunch menus so I'm trying this out as a good editing spot they also have outlets all over this side and the other side so it really feels like this was a place made for studying and doing computer tech stuff it's also on the main road so I can still people watch when I take my breaks the lighting, everything feels really nice, but of course we gotta put the drinks and the food to the test, so I'm waiting on my order right now. So I got a vanilla bean latte for 6,000 won, and then bagel and some plain cream cheese, of course. Blueberry bagel, of course. <laughs> bagel and cream cheese was total 6,000 won, so altogether about 12,000 won for this cute lunch. Cheers. Okay, so lunch is finished and now it's time for me to get some editing done. I'm really vibing with this cafe and so this might be my new, this might be my new place to come and get content done when I want to get out of the house. I'm gonna get some editing done and then we, we will see what we get up to next.
I open the kitchen packages, so might as well <laughs> open the other packages that came into. Okay, this one is for the bathroom shower caddy for my toothbrushes and toothpaste and all that stuff. Um, similar to what I had in the other house, but I didn't bring it, so got another one. Oh, <laughs> my garlic powder. I'm at that point now where I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with stuff up here. So my condiments are growing. It's not really fitting here. Maybe soon think about where I could better store my medicine. Maybe under here. I'm just not gonna worry about it right now. But I'll be on the lookout. Oh, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Okay, I'm just not gonna worry about it right now. Anyways, I'm rambling, gonna finish this up, clean this stuff up, go ahead and install this in the bathroom and get ready to eat because it is almost seven o'clock. Welcome to the futon, the new floor seating in the new apartment. First, I want to apologize for the short vlog and also there's not much communicating happening in the vlog. These are clips from the past few weeks that I wanted to put out but just couldn't find the right video to put them into. And also I just filmed some content for Instagram so I looked at the camera and thought that this was a great time for us to catch up and also for me to sit down and have a chit chat with you all. Now that I think about it, it's been a while since I've like sat down in a chair to film content for YouTube. So this is quite nostalgic, but also I'm a little nervous because I haven't really talked in this way in a while. Been doing more vlogs and outdoor content. So if you may or may not know, Sephora is in South Korea. They have both an online store as well as offline stores. And they have announced that both platforms, online and offline, will be closing here in South Korea. So for some, that may be a major victory, especially to the Korean market because brands like Shikor and Olive Young are booming and just their success didn't really allow space for a Western store like Sephora to come here. But I can't help but acknowledge the deficit, not the deficit, I can't help but acknowledge the gap that that is now gonna create for people with darker skin tones and basically most non-Korean people living in Korea. So it's like a, a mix of emotions. I'm happy for the Korean economy that money seems to be going towards Korean brands and Korean companies like Olive Young and Chikor and even Kupong. I buy, I mean, there's makeup in all kinds of stores, Daiso, everything. And that's not even talking about the companies that are open here and the indie brands that are selling amazing beauty products. For me, being a black woman, being a dark skinned woman, Sephora was the only store where I could purchase foundation offline. It was the only store that I could walk into and find concealer that was dark enough for my skin tone. That takes away my ability to swatch products, that takes away my ability to really feel free as a beauty consumer living in Korea. Sephora Korea, they carried brands like Fenty, they carried Huda Beauty, Anastasia Beverly Hills, Benefit. Folks may say, well, you chose to move there, you knew that that was a homogenous country, you knew that there wasn't access to these kind of products in the first place, so why complain? Well, I complain because the Korean market is moving globally. There are brands that are launching cushion foundations in darker complexions. They're targeting and focusing attention to darker skin tones 
but their scope is only to the Western world. They're not really introducing those products within Korea. I know that this isn't a big deal to many people, but I want to address that it is a big deal to folks like me who have set up roots here and consume beauty products on a daily basis. Even as brands are becoming more understanding and inclusive and, and promoting different skin tones and hair types and skin conditions, there are still folks that are falling through the cracks. In the skincare world, what matters is your skin type and also your skin concerns. It doesn't really pay too much attention to complexion and things like that. But with makeup, and especially here in the Korean beauty market, they create products that are super dewy and all about glass skin and glowing from within and more minimal, natural, everyday makeup. For some people, that may be their, their go-to. That may be the products that they like to use. For other people, they may want more coverage. They may want more of a matte or natural finish to makeup. So just not having access to those in Korea is, it's tough. So for me, it's been like 50-50. Half of my products I was able to purchase at Sephora and the other half I've always had to shop online to get those products. I've shopped at Colt Beauty, which they, they ship products from the UK, but they ship to South Korea. I've also shopped at iHerb and also Amazon. I'm not saying that I can't just continue that with all of my products, but then you get into customs and duty taxes as well as products getting hung up at customs and just the wait time that it takes to receive your products. So now I'm asking myself, like, what next? Where do I shop for my products? Am I gonna just continue shopping online and just ordering things, paying the customs, the fees, the duties, all of those things? There was a bit of a silver lining that came in the, literally within the past 24 hours. So a couple weeks ago, I don't know if they're a new brand, I believe that they're quite new, but a, a beauty brand was launched in Korea called Yepo Beauty. They have products that cater to all skin complexions. Um, right now, I'm, I think that they are just launching their cushion foundation, but I know in the past they had other products that they were also promoting, including skincare. Yepo Beauty, they were looking for content creators and online personalities who could try out their products, offer feedback, and then also promote them if, you know, they like the product. I had an acquaintance encourage me to apply and I applied and I was accepted. And so I get to try a new cushion foundation that's being launched with shades that run as deep as mine and even deeper, which is always the goal. I just got confirmation yesterday that the product was being shipped to me. And so this is a product that I get to try out and offer feedback on and see how it fits my skin tone and my skin concerns and complexion and all those things. My undertones also are very important. I'm not gonna sing their praises because there have been brands that have tried this before and undertones were wrong and formulations were wrong. So I'm not telling you this to be like, you know, jump on this, but I think that they recognize the gap in the market and they are stepping to the plate and doing their part to try to address the problem. And I know that the founder even went online a couple days ago to talk about Sephora closing and what that means to brown people, melanated people living here, and how she is hopeful that her brand can possibly fill in that margin. I guess for me, I'm going into it not having expectations. I'm hopeful that it can be an amazing product that, like I have been saying, can fill that margin, but I am also not gonna put that kind of pressure on them because that would be comparing them to a Fenty and a Huda, all these other Western brands with a lot more money and a lot more influence and a lot more bodies that would purchase the products. We'll see, that's, that's my sit down. Um, as someone who makes content in this world, this is an important topic that I wanted to bring up and I would love to continue the conversation in the comments. You know, I have friends, I have you all that live all around the world. So if you can relate to these topics, if you live in other Asian countries or any places around the world where access to beauty care is difficult, I'd love to hear your stories as well. And I just, I see this as a growing opportunity. This is where the starting line is and we'll see 
where things go as the race continues. Yeah, just I want to see brands who say that they are working towards diversity and inclusion and accessibility and they recognize the different bodies that are living in Korea. The brands that talk about these things, I want to see them put their money and their time where their mouth is. 15 million brands here that have 15 million shades of beige, but it would be nice to have tones closer to mine and also acknowledgement of undertones because not everyone is red brown. <laughs> not everyone is a mocha. Not everyone is a caramel. There are people like me that have neutral undertones or even olive undertones, yellow undertones, TBD <laughs> on all those things. And also let me know if you would like to see a review of the Cushion Foundation when I receive it and play with it a little bit. I'd be happy to either film a short a short form video or even filming a review video. I'd be more than happy to put that up. And I'm sure <laughs> the brand would also appreciate that as well. <sighs> I could sit here and talk about this all day. I've been having conversations with friends online about this most of the end of this week. You wanna talk about it? Let's talk about it in the comments. But I appreciate you all so much and Thank you for watching the video. <laughs> I hope that if the clips were short, at least the editing and the music was enjoyable, I try to keep it as engaging as possible. I absolutely adore you all. I get such a kick and so much joy out of reading the comments after I upload. So please do the same with this video. And I am looking forward to seeing y'all next Sunday. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to like, comment and subscribe down below. I'm remembering to say that. See you next time. Bye.